Ancient Greek skeptics held to the view that nothing could be known. One of their arguments was known as Agrippa's trilemma. We are told to state a belief and then ask, wait, how do you know that? And whatever justification we give for that belief, because of so-and-so. We then repeat the question, well, how do you know that? This line of questioning will eventually lead us one of three ways. One, an infinite regress. Two, a circle of beliefs. Three, beliefs that don't have any further justification. The infinite regress, option one, is like the story of the woman who says the world is on the back of a giant turtle. And when asked about uh, what's the turtle standing on, she says, oh, sorry, but it's turtles all the way down. Option two is the simple fallacy of circular reasoning. When someone says something like, miracles are impossible because they never happen, and we know they never happen because they're impossible, they really aren't giving any sort of justification. That what they're doing is just asserting both statements together. Miracles are impossible and do not happen. With option one and two out of the way, this, this leaves us option three as the only option left, which is called foundationalism. On foundationalism, certain beliefs are considered basic, meaning that they form the foundation of one's belief system and do not require any additional justification. The first flavor of foundationalism, and the one people think of when they hear the word foundationalism, is actually hard foundationalism. On this view, beliefs have to meet one of three criteria to be considered basic. They have to be one, infallible beliefs, which are beliefs that cannot possibly be false. Two, indubitable beliefs, beliefs that cannot possibly be doubted. Or three, incorrigible beliefs, beliefs that cannot possibly be corrected. An example of an infallible belief is the law of non-contradiction. To deny the law of non-contradiction is just to affirm it. And so one cannot possibly be wrong about it. An example of an indubitable belief is one's belief in, in one's own existence. I can assert that all sorts of other thing, things don't exist, but I cannot doubt that I exist. For who, then, would be doubting? Now, an example of an incorrigible belief is my belief in my subjective experiences. I may be wrong uh, in saying that what I'm seeing is a white monitor, but I cannot be corrected about my belief that what I'm seeing looks like a white monitor to me. Now, Descartes held to hard foundationalism in his Meditations on First Philosophy. He said to imagine a situation where a demon was constantly deceiving his senses, and his reasoning, and his beliefs. But even if he were being deceived in such a way, Descartes would have to exist in order to be deceived. He says, after having reflected well and carefully examined all things, we must come to the definite conclusion in this proposition, I am, I exist, is necessarily true each time I pronounce it, or that I mentally conceive it. These indubitable propositions form the basis for this Cartesian epistemology. Descartes built his system on the foundation of his own existence, which he could not rationally deny. He then argued for the reliability of sense experience based on his idea of God, which could not possibly have been built into his mind by anyone but God. With God as the guarantor of his sense perceptions, Descartes could then build a system of knowledge, trusting his senses and his reasoning. Hard foundationalism has fallen on hard times recently. The difficulty with hard foundationalism is that one is forced to justify all beliefs on the basis of this very limited number of beliefs that we can hold with certainty. A second problem with hard foundationalism is that we do not think in this manner. We form most of our beliefs on sense experience and intuition and different heuristic devices. We do not check our beliefs for adherence to this kind of rigid, hard foundationalist structure. And what this means is that hard foundationalism is at best an ideal for how we ought to form our beliefs, not a description of how we actually do form our beliefs. 
So next up is moderate foundationalism. Moderate foundationalism rose in the second half of the 20th century in response to objections that our infallible, indubitable, and incorrigible beliefs are just too sparse to form any adequate foundation for what we claim to know is true. Moderate foundationalism allows as basic any belief that has a strong presumption of truth. Now, the biggest problem with moderate foundationalism is the problem of arbitrariness. What keeps us from stipulating any belief which we cannot support with other beliefs as basic? Well, we believe this. Um, I can't build it on basic beliefs, so that belief itself must therefore be basic. It seems like we could just justify any belief we want on this system. So the next system is called foundherentism, and it's invented by Susan Hack to combine the strengths of foundationalism and coherentism. There are certain beliefs which are considered basic on foundherentism and which form the basis of our knowledge. Now coherentism states that our beliefs are justified by the relationship to other beliefs, kind of like a spider's web with nothing at the foundation. Every belief reinforces each other, with none of them being basic. And the systems that hang together are the most justified. The problem with this coherentism is that it works of fiction and conspiracy theories can be highly coherent and even connect with our current system of beliefs. There can be independent webs which are fully coherent within each other but contradict different webs of beliefs. But on foundherentism, these basic beliefs serve to anchor the coherent web of beliefs to tell us which web of beliefs is correct. They take that web out from the middle of nowhere and anchor it into reality. Now Hack asks us to think of our belief systems like a crossword puzzle. Certain answers from the form the foundation for other answers, and yet the answers have to go here as well. No one answer is the cornerstone of your entire puzzle. Beliefs are not built on a purely vertical system. Not every belief is justified on the basis of more basic beliefs. Some beliefs are basic, and we build a web of beliefs by adding beliefs which cohere to basic beliefs and to each other. The system has coherence as its basis for justification, but basic beliefs keep the web from being arbitrary. Any web consistent with itself must also be able to accommodate those basic beliefs, but critics like Lawrence Bonjour have said that foundherentism is just another label for moderate foundationalism. It's just as arbitrary. So now, reformed epistemology, though, gives us many of the benefits of coherentism and foundationalism, and places them within a foundationalist framework. Plantinga's project seems to provide justification for our common sense beliefs and to avoid the problem of arbitrariness. On reformed epistemology, beliefs are justified if they are produced by properly functioning mental faculties in an appropriate environment. On Plantinga's reformed epistemology, most of our beliefs are foundational. Traditional foundationalism looks at our belief structure like a skyscraper. There's a narrow foundation of beliefs which supports the entire structure. On reformed epistemology, our belief structure is like bricks scattered throughout a parking lot. A few beliefs are stacked on top of each other, but most lay at the ground level. Most of our beliefs are basic. What keeps contradictory from beliefs from both be con being considered basic is the notion of a defeater. A defeater is something that causes a belief to lose its justification and or warrant. If what I see looks like a, she a sheep standing in a field, I have justification that I actually am seeing a sheep standing in a field. However, if I talk to someone next to me who says, oh yeah, I have this dog in the field, and when I look at it from a distance, the, the dog will look like a sheep, then I have a defeater for my initial belief that there actually is a sheep out in the field. Most of our beliefs may be basic under this view, but they are also defeatable. One implication of Reformed epistemology is that belief in God cannot uh, can be considered justified until proven otherwise. Plantinga thinks of this as analogous to the problem of other, other minds. How do I know there are other minds besides my own? Philosophers have tried to give arguments for this principle, especially arguments from analogy, but they have ended up either being question-begging 
or logically invalid. There simply are no good arguments for the existence of other minds, and yet we all believe we are justified in believing in the existence of other minds. Some beliefs are unjustified, even if they are true. Like if I believe the universe had an even number of stars. I could be correct about it, but I would be unjustified because that belief is just a random guess. Now, under Reformed epistemology, belief in God can't have this kind of defect. It's not possible, because if a good God exists, then he could plant knowledge of his existence into some individuals. As Paul says, for his in invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world, in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. If this is the case, then one cannot argue that belief in the existence of God is unjustified even if God happens to exist. In order for, instead, in order for one to argue against the rationality of belief in God, one has to give an argument that God does not exist. Now, foundationalism is the axiomatic solution to Agrippa's trilemma, grounding our knowledge in a more basic set of axioms. Coherentism and infinitism cannot form a basis for a formal system such as logic or mathematics, since they either form an infinite vicious regress or result in circular reasoning, and this is going to leave us with foundationalism. And for similar reasons, they can't form a basis of knowledge. Now, hard foundationalism is difficult to accept because the foundation is just too narrow. There aren't enough of these indubitable beliefs to really form a full system of knowledge justified in it. Moderate foundationalism is just too arbitrary to work. Foundherentism looks actually quite promising, but it's, it might degenerate into moderate foundationalism and doesn't make as much sense of our ordinary beliefs. But reformed epistemology makes the best sense of our everyday experience and coheres the best with our common sense beliefs.